Kawa 230 SL has just come back from a film set. And on the last day of filming, they were having trouble starting the car. So we are going to have a look at the cold start mechanism or the warm up valve in this car. So we managed to get these two screws out holding the thermostat. Let's see how our cold start mechanism is looking. Whoa, don't lose that copper crush washer there or ceiling ring. That there is fairly typical of oh, these old pagodas. That little rod there should move in and out freely. And as you can see, it's completely seized and this thing is completely gummed up. Um, so we're gonna have a go at taking that off and we've managed to get this screw loose, but the other one is not coming loose at all. And let's see if we can free that up. We do actually have a spare one of these units. This is the unit here, which Roger Edwards Motors suggested we bought about 10 or 15 years ago on the basis that they were only gonna go up and they were very rare. And boy, how right he was. So this rod here is supposed to go up and down. You see, like so. And that is not doing that on the car. So you can see on, there should be a little adjuster screw here, which basically locks this bolt in. On our car, that's snapped off. Um, that piston isn't moving up and down at all. And now it just remains to be seen if we can get these two um, bolts undone. Incidentally, these little valves here are identified by the number here, P3. Now this here is actually only the thermostat housing and inside that thermostat is housing is actual, actually the thermostat itself. There should be a cop, copper seal ring at the top there. And once again, I believe this rod here should move in and out as the temperature of the car changes. And that in turn pushes down on that rod and regulates the fuel air mixture when you tap that thermostat out, you will get water, a little bit of water just leaking out from these hoses. So just have something ready to catch it. Having trouble getting that screw undone, just bash the end of a screwdriver on the edge there. And we, you can see we've just managed to loosen it just by actually tapping a screwdriver that way and that way. We will be replacing those screws. So if you damage the screw head, it's not a tragedy. Just remember the two screws that hold on that valve there are different lengths. The one closest to you, closest to the wing of the car here is the longer of the two. These little spaces here are really important because they determine how far this little piston here pushes down on that rod and will regulate both your and mixture and also your idle. Just note there are two spaces here and you can take one of those spaces out and one will be thicker than the other usually and to regulate both the idle speed and the running of the car if need be. Thermostat's been in the freezer. Let's see what if anything has happened. Um, nothing by the looks of it. Just put some cold water on there and see if there's any change at all. So that's now at room temperature. And I can't see any difference at all. Let's put some hot water on there and see if there's any movement. Well, that's now in boiling water and all I can see is there are some bubbles coming from there. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that doesn't seem to be expanding out. The bad news is that this thermostat here looks like it's knackered, which is a shame. The good news is that they're still available from Mercedes. And here's the part number, 00120036175. And you will get a shock when you come to buy one over £500 plus VAT. Um, you'll also need a new ceiling ring. This is the part number here, 007603020101. Um, and you can still also get the little air filter here. There's probably not much wrong with this air filter, but it's old and rusty, so it's not that expensive to replace. We've just replaced it there, £36.50. Now, here is the new unit, and you can see that this piston is supposed to slide up and down, like so. And on this unit here, that is jammed solid. We have had that soaking for days in evaporust, injector cleaner, you name it, it hasn't moved. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a socket in there. I'm just going to tap it 
gently to start off with and see if we can feed that up. once with a hammer and I definitely felt that move but if you look closely you can see it's still about a millimeter or two shorter than this one we don't want to tap it too much because it only extends a certain amount yeah once again I'm sure that's moving to, to move all the way down the question is can we gently tap that and get it to move the this other particular way unit here you can push this piston all the way out and just for the interest of science that's what it looks like there it's just a piston with a spring you can lube this with a little bit of silicon grease and that's the inside there now on some of these I don't know why this one here doesn't have the cam on it but at the one we took from the car you can see that little bulbous piece of metal there that actually turns when you turn this nut here which is obviously sheared off and is held in place by this pin and that stops the piston coming out so in order to get the piston out here we would have to drill out that cam bolt there whatever it's called and take out this pin we're up to five millimeters in that hole now and we're getting perilously close to the edge but it's still not budging i've tried heating it I'm just going to try and easy out in there and give it a little twist and see if maybe that metal is so thin now it'll break. I'm going to try and drill it out. I think we've just about got it. I think that, my friend, is it. Whoops, there we go. Wow. That there is the cam. And what I wanted to see was how the end cam is actually made or how it's fitted in there but I think it's just basically a bit of the original bolt I don't know how well you can see that now that we've got that little cam piece out we should be able to tap this all the way out and get that cylinder out hopefully we've just given that a little blast of WD-40 in there and we're gonna see if we can tap that out. Okay, we're well, gonna have to get a drill bit or something to tap that all the way through. Just chopped off a little bit of an Allen key here. I don't really want to be bashing metal on metal, but I don't see the choice I've got. Okay. We are making progress. Our next challenge will be to get that screw out there without shearing it. Now, in the event, I gave this to a local machine shop that we use for skimming heads and all sorts of difficult tasks and asked them if they could put this on a lathe and make this cylinder move smoothly up and down and also re-engineer a bolt in there with a cam on it, which they've done. So I'm just going to... Um, take this out now because just arrived in the post from Aku is hopefully the screw that will go in there. These are all non-standard fittings, imperial fittings, and possibly the screw or the nut and the bolt that will go in here. So what he's had to do here is put a brass insert in here. And this he has engineered from a piece of hex um, rod. And then he's laid in this little cam. I mean, he really is a genius. So now that we've taken this out, we should be able to get this bit here out. And what he's also done for us is freed up all of this. So the part we've ordered, or parts we've ordered from Aku, is this little bolt here, 1032, half inch imperial, full threaded bolt. The nut that goes with that, and hopefully the little locking screw. Now, I know I've mentioned this company before, but if you're doing projects and you need to order one-off obscure little parts like that, this company is just fantastic. They deliver the next day. You can pay them a flat fee and postage is free, basically, and next day delivery. And it's absolutely superb. If you're doing a project and you realize you need oh, one imperial bolt or nut or any kind of fitting, definitely worth checking their website out. Let's see if they sent us the right bits. So if all has gone to plan this will fit on there and this nut is basically the locking nut that will determine how far this is up 
This hopefully will screw into our piston like so. And these incidentally are stainless steel fittings so they won't rust in the future. Now the astute among you will notice that on the original piece here, the head of the bolt is smaller than the nut. And that's obviously so that you can adjust the height of this here, which will adjust the fuel air mixtures so you can put a socket over to um, unlock the locking nut and then a smaller socket to adjust this. Obviously with this arrangement the locking nut and the bolt are the same size, you wouldn't be able to do that. So we basically have two choices. Um, if I had a machine shop with a really good pillar drill, what I would do is simply drill a hole right through the middle of there, tap out some threads and use a little screw like this, screw it into the top and just lock it in with um, Loctite. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just draw around this nut like that with some marker pen and then I'm going to use a finger file or something just to sand off the edges of that to make it smaller and make it that size there. So I'm just going to give that a go. There we go, that'll do. We've gone down a socket size and that'll allow us to tighten up that bottom nut and use a smaller socket to turn the top nut. This should just fit back in there like so. And then we just need to put the cam bolt on like that. Put this screw in like so and this will be ready to go back on the car. On early SLs, the warm-up device or cold start valve, this has a number of different names, was purely mechanical. On later SLs, the warm-up regulator or WUR um, has electrical connections. And the way this works is that this piston at the bottom here presses down on a lever in the fuel injection pump. And the more it presses down, the more the flow of fuel to the cylinders is restricted. The idea being that as the thermostat warms up, a lever comes out the bottom of the thermostat, pushes down on this and pushes that lever out like so. As the car warms up, it requires less fuel. And that is the purpose of this device to get the car running smoothly as the engine warms up. Now, the degree to which this piston comes out is regulated by two things. First of all, there are two shim washers here. And if you took those shim washers away, this would sit further down into the engine and would push down on that lever more and thus restrict the fuel more. So as you take those shim washers away, this rises up and the engine becomes richer during the whole warm up and cold start process. The process or mechanism that regulates how far this piston goes down is of course the thermostat that sits on top of here and pushes down on that little bolt there. The other function of this little device here is it regulates the air. So you have an air filter screwed in here and this air goes off to the manifold. And as this piston moves down, it restricts the flow of air. So when the car is cold and this piston is up here, air flows freely through here as the car warms up and this moves down. The, a valve is restricted and at the bottom here, barely any air is coming in through this device here. Now on the 230 SL, the thermostat looks like this. It looks different on the 280 SLs. And this little rod here only moves by a very small amount. I think the maximum it moves is five millimeters, but in my experience, it can be even less than that. And this here sits in a casing that's surrounded by water that flows through the casing. And as the engine heats up and the water heats up, so this rod starts extending down. Now, when the car is cold, you want this set up so that this here is not pushing down at all on that top screw. At least it's just touching it so that you have the maximum airflow and maximum fuel flow when the car is cold. The screw in there and the lock nut will regulate how much air is flowing through here when the car is cold and as it warms up. The setup on the 280 is slightly different. You don't have this bolt through there with the lock nut. What you have is some shim washers held in with a spring 
and you can remove those washers or add washers depending how far you want the thermostat to push down on here. In my opinion, this is actually a much, much easier and better method, um, and it's far more adjustable. This particular device, if you blow in this air hole here and air comes out here, you will just start to feel a restriction when the piston is at about this level here, and that's set up right, and what you need to happen then is when the car is cold in your garage, the top of that little bolt there needs to just be touching the top of this so that as that expands, it pushes the bolt down and then the air becomes progressively more and more restricted and the fuel becomes more and more restricted as this pushes down on the lever in the injection. I'm not gonna go too much into how to adjust the mixture or using the screw on the back of the injection pump. Um, but all of these settings here that you're going to be adjusting basically are just affecting your, basically your idle and also your revs up to about 1500 revs. So once the car is warm and driving, none of the adjustments you make here will have any effect or minimal effect. The last adjustment you can make on here is via this bolt here and it should have a little cam on the end of it. Um, which regulates how far this can actually travel up. So remember, the further this is up, the richer the car will run. So if you want your cold start to not ever be too rich, uh, for one of a better phrase, you can adjust that so that this piston cannot rise above a certain level when the car is cold. And that then is locked in place with this little screw that here. That there is the... Um, piston that the this pu pushes down on so just make sure that that is free moving this on just don't forget the metal shims now, on this car here if I was to put that in as it is you can see I don't know how well you can see that how far that is off if I tighten that down that would be pushing that piston in an awful long way and leaning out the mixture so basically we've got to adjust that screw down now we could also adjust this cam bolt here to force that um, piston there lower and as just to remind you as that pushes down it leans the mixture there's less fuel getting to the um, to the engine so if you found that in this position here your car was running way too rich or maybe you lived in a hot area you could turn that there and lock it in place this copper crush washer or seal ring here seals the water inside the thermostat housing so it's a good idea to take this thermostat housing off and make sure it's nice and clean you've got a nice clean fat surface so when this pushes up against it it stops water getting in there so I've adjusted that screw in now so that when this sits on top of there, it just presses down a little bit on that lever. Just remember, when you come to tighten these two up, try and tighten them up evenly so that that washer there seals, because what you don't want is to have water running down into that mechanism and then corroding it, which is probably what happened before. Put that pipe in there, and the last thing we need to do is just screw in this new air filter now we're not using any crush washers because there aren't any on the picture and these are obviously just air not water or oil or anything so let's just try that and what i'm going to do is change the spark plugs because this car will have been doing short distances and the film set and these spark plugs are likely to be all coked up. We've changed the spark plugs, just need to top up the coolant a little bit, but let's just see if this car starts after however many months of This car starts right up on the first turn of the key, and now what we're going to have to do is obviously adjust the idle and tighten the fan belt. I'm going to leave this video here. This car 
starts up straight away now having changed that um, and renewed all of that mechanism there we do have a little bit of work to do on this car in the future I'm going to renew all of these manky old fuel pipes here and I can see that some of these pipes here could do with renewing um, and we're also possibly going to get a analyzer and on this and tune the engine up just using the fuel mixture screw that lives just down there but that's for another video.